Hey guys, this is Colin with Alpine Electronics. Today we're going to be going over the installation of our brand new i407 WRA-JK, which fits 2007 to 2018 Wrangler JK models, both two-door and four-door. Let's go grab our tools and get started. So before we get into the installation, let's go over some of the tools that are outlined in the manual. Uh, so first, we're going to want some sort of a saw. I would pay careful attention to the blade, make sure that it's rated for plastic, that way it cuts through easily. Um, Next, we're gonna want a multimeter, just in case we need to test through any connections. We need a panel tool, be able to go through and pop off all of our panels. A seven mil of some sort, I like to use mine on a, uh, on a screw gun, makes it very easy to remove screws quickly. Uh, number two Phillips, a T20 Torx, a 10 mil for our disconnecting our negative terminal on our battery, a set of wire strippers, and in my case, they are wire strippers and pliers, a set of wire cutters, and you may want to have the remainder of your sockets as well, just in case there's something else aftermarket in the way. So now we'll take our 10 mil ratchet and disconnect the negative terminal on our battery for safety. So now we can start this assembly, removing seven mil screws from our top storage area, our knee panel, behind our window switch, and then we can remove our dashboard for access to the radio. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove the seven mil in our top storage area. We're gonna start by removing the rubber insert. Now we'll go ahead and remove our knee panel and the two seven mil screws underneath. Next, we're gonna go ahead and remove the power window switch. I like to turn it to the side, release the red clip, push the button, and it just pops out of the way. And then remove the seven mil screw from behind the switch. Now we can go ahead and remove the dash bezel. Just move the steering wheel out of the way. And it's all just pressure clips. Now that we have all the panels removed, we can go ahead and remove the radio. It's four seven mil screws on the outside. Now we can go ahead and unplug all of our plugs. Next, we're going to move our factory connections out of the way. And we're going to trim off our center support for clearance for the new radio. Now that we've finished cutting out our support bar, one thing worth noting, if your vehicle was equipped with the factory Uconnect module, now would be a good time to unplug it just so it doesn't interfere with operation of our radio over the Bluetooth connection. You can do that by just pulling off your climate control panel, which is all just pressure clips. The module will be right behind here. This vehicle is a Sahara, so it doesn't have it, so we can go ahead and skip this step. Now that we're done our disassembly, let's go ahead and unbox our radio and start on the installation. Go ahead and open up our brackets. Uh, one thing to note, they are metal brackets, so much sturdier, worthy of the, uh, the Jeep environment. Go ahead and unpack our harnesses. And note, we include Jeep-style plugs on the end of it, so no cutting or splicing involved with this kit. Next, we'll unbox our Datalink Maestro. This is what retains a lot of our factory functions, including steering wheel controls, and even gives us some new functions like gauge readout on our touchscreen. Next, we're gonna go ahead and flash our Datalink Maestro module. We're gonna go ahead and plug in our included USB connection. Plug into our laptop. If we don't flash our Datalink Maestro module, 
what will happen is you won't have steering wheel control functions and your gauge readout will not work on the screen. Um, the radio will still power up and it will still operate, uh, but you won't have those features until we program the module properly. Now that we're plugged in, we're going to go ahead and flash our IdataLink module. A couple things to note. The serial number that you'll need for flashing the module is on the bottom of the radio itself. Also take note of the steering wheel control configuration included in your vehicle um, and the year, make, and model of the vehicle itself. So one quick tip, now that we're flashed, on the last screen on the bottom right is a selection for a wallet card. And what that is is a printout of all of your steering wheel controls and exactly what they do. Um, some buttons have double functions where if you press them, they do one thing. If you press and hold, they do something else. So it's a nice, handy, quick reference guide. Now that we have our Maestro flashed, we're going to go ahead and start with bench assembly of the radio, brackets, and harnessing. So we'll start with our brackets, which are labeled L and R. Makes it easy to determine which side they go on. And I like to use a hand driver for this. Just makes uh, less chance for, for stripping out the screw holes. It's worth noting there's four screw holes. Um, really only need two screws per side to attach the brackets. Now we're going to go ahead and plug in our Maestro harness. It's worth noting there is a uh, harness labeled rear camera that we won't be using today because we're not installing a backup camera. If you are, it's clearly labeled. Um, there are four plugs that go into the Maestro. We're going to go ahead and start with the power plug. Just plugs into the side like that. Really, it's pretty hard to, to mess these up. They're, uh, they really only plug in one way. A couple of them are color coded, so very, very straightforward. So worth noting, the blue port and red port will not be used for this installation. Now that the Maestro is installed on the harness, we're going to go ahead and take the radio side of the harness, which uh, is labeled, uh, there's a main plug that's labeled power on the back of the radio. We're going to go ahead and plug that in. We're going to take the CAN IF plug, clearly labeled on both the plug and the back of the radio. We're going to plug that in. And then we're going to take our RCA harnesses, including our camera harness, and plug them into place. I like to plug in all the harnesses, even if they're not being used, just in case you expand in the future. Now that we have our bench assembly done, we're going to go ahead and jump into the vehicle, run our Bluetooth mic, our USB extension, and our OBD2 plug. Worth noting, if you plan to use the HDMI port, now would be a good time to run it. I like to start with running our USB. Um, it's worth noting that if your Jeep is not equipped with the premium amplified system, you can easily add our power stack amplifiers and the right angle end on our USB allows for clearance with those. So we have a KTA 200M that would run a, a, a optional subwoofer. We even have one that goes right under the passenger seat in four-door JKs um, or a KTA 450 that can add more juice to the main four speakers in the vehicle. So to run the cable, we can just go ahead and open our glove box, take the female end, and there's a nice open area right behind it snake the cable through. Next, we're going to go ahead and install our Bluetooth microphone. We can just pop the mic on the bracket. Then we can clip it to the header right above the rearview mirror. One thing to note is above the left side of the mirror, it's a little panel clip that just unsnaps that gives you access. Next, we'll go ahead and snake our cord above the header, down the A-pillar, and across to the dash cavity. It may help to pop this side panel off, which you can just push from the inside up here. It's all just panel clips. Then you can snake your wire the rest of the way down the pillar.
Next, we're gonna run our OBD2 cord, which plugs in right under the driver's side of the dashboard, and we're gonna follow the same route as our Bluetooth microphone. Next, we're going to go ahead and install our Sirius XM antenna adapter and our FM antenna adapter. The Sirius XM adapter would only be used if we had a Sirius XM tuner, which we do not today. However, I'm going to install it just in case the customer adds one in the future. It's worth noting that both the FM and Sirius XM adapters look very similar. Uh, the obvious distinction is that FM has a much thicker cable going to it, so it's easy to identify on both the car and the adapter side thicker cables go together. Now we'll go ahead and make all our connections at the dash with the radio that we prepped on the bench. We can start by plugging in our FM antenna. Worth noting, Sirius antenna adapter is here. If you did have a Sirius XM tuner, it'll plug into the back of the radio right here. We do not today, so we're gonna go ahead and skip that step. Now we'll go ahead and plug in our Bluetooth microphone. Note, there's two ports that look the same. One is labeled mic. Go ahead and plug in our USB. Next, we'll go ahead and plug in our factory G plug. Worth noting, there are two plugs that will not be retained the square plug, and the factory USB plug. We're just going to go ahead and tuck both of those off to the side. Last, we can plug in our OBD2 connection. So this particular vehicle has the factory premium sound system in it. In those vehicles, we do need to switch the front and rear speaker connections as outlined in the manual. We'll go ahead and plug in white for black. This is going to allow our factory hands-free calling to go to the appropriate speakers and us to hear our navigation prompts. Uh, through the appropriate speakers. If you do not have the factory premium system, you do not need to do this step. Now we can go ahead and take our radio, tuck all of our modules behind the dash. And start to mount the radio in place. Next, we'll go ahead and reinstall our factory bezel, being careful not to contact the radio. Next, we can reinstall our power window switch. We'll start by putting a seven mil screw back into the bottom of the bezel right behind it. Then I like to pull the plug sideways, just install the window switch sideways like this, clips back in place, and then we put the red locking tab back down, and the window switch just presses back into place. We can reinstall the screw on the top of the bezel. Now we'll go ahead and put the two screws in the bezel that are right at the top of the knee panel. Last, we we'll clip our knee panel back into place. Just hooks in the bottom, pressure clips up top. Now that everything's back together, let's go ahead and reconnect the negative terminal on our battery. Go ahead and power it up. And the install is not officially done until we go ahead and remove the protective film from the front of the display. All right, now that everything's powered up, we want to go over one more tip. So to get into the settings menu, which is currently grayed out, you need to pull your e-brake up, down, and up again and then the settings menu will highlight. So 
If you didn't do that e-brake sequence, you won't be able to get into the settings menu like this. One other thing to note, this thing comes right out of the box, tuned for Jeep. There you have it guys. That's the installation of our i407 WRAJK. Hopefully it made the process a little bit easier for you guys to follow along with the step-by-step -step instructions. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe to Alpine TV. Also, you can look me up on Facebook under uh, Alpine Colin. Shoot me any questions that you guys have there as well, and I'll always be there to help. Happy Jeeping.